Hello, so this is going to be our differentiation series. I have laid out some questions. Um, just I've kind of zoomed out to show you all through what we're going to be doing. I've got some standard questions along here, so looking at basic differentiation. Um, then we get into the slightly harder ones where we're looking at what's a turning point, equation of a tangent. Um, and then the, the, the much harder ones, I would say the optimization question. And then a little bit about graphs as well. So it could be a few videos on this. It's quite a big topic, but that's our main skills. You know, can we differentiate a function? Can we find stationary points and tangents? Can we optimize functions? Again, looking at a turning point, and then do we understand what the differential graph looks like as well? That's the kind of big skills. So, yep, ten minutes of video. I can see us doing oh, uh, maybe seven videos. Be a long way. So anyway. Let's get cracking. So I've left the answers on here because sometimes I think one or two of the answers aren't quite right. Um, so yeah, just to just to maybe show uh, what was going on. If there was a mistake on the page, um, you know, in case you look and think, well, that's not the answer that's on the page. So I've just left the answers there. So differentiate this function. So the rule we should be thinking about, now let's just pause this. Yeah, sorry, that's better. Um, the rule we should be thinking about here is how to turn a function from its um, surd form and its negative form, sorry, from, from the surd form into a useful form and maybe um, turning this back into a useful form as well. So just a little quick update. If we've got x to the, good start. If we've got x to the half, I can rewrite that as root x. And that's because the one stays where it is and the two moves round. Okay, so one stays put and the two moves round. The other thing I'll be thinking about is see I've got x to the power of three halves. So that's going to be x cubed square root. Okay. The three stays where it is and the two moves round. And you can also do that vice versa if you want to go from the third form back to that. Okay. So what you're thinking here is there's a little two in there we don't write because we are lazy mathematicians and we don't need to write it as implied very much in the same way that I don't need to write x to the 1, I would just write x. Okay. So that's what we're looking at. So let's rewrite that then. I would say I've got x to the 3 over 2, because I'm going to move the 2 around. Take away 2x to the negative 1. I actually might take, make this pen a wee bit smaller. It's quite thick, isn't it? There we go, that's better. I am now ready to differentiate. So if that's my y equals, because right now I've not differentiated, I've just set it up. Yeah, it looks better, doesn't it? My differential dy by dx is going to be 3 over 2x to the 1 half. And that's because, and you feel free to write this if you want, I sometimes write at the side of the page, x cubed becomes 3x squared, just to remind me that I'm multiplying the power of the coefficient. So 3 times 1 is 3. And then take away one. Okay. So times them, take one away. So in this case, I'm doing three times two times the one. So three over two. Sorry, three over two times one. So three over two drops down here. And if I take away one, that's me taking away two halves. So I'm left with a half. And that'll be plus two x. And negative one, take away one. It's not zero, it's negative two. And then just to finish off, we're going to write it in a nice way. So that would be me saying three over two root x. You could write that if you wanted. You could say that's 3 root x over 2. You could write that if you want. That's fine. And then when I change the sign, I cross the line. So my 2 stays where it is, but the x squared goes on bottom. So the next part of this question, I think, is understanding that the x is separate from the coefficient. Okay. So here, this root, for example, doesn't cover the 3 over 2. And here with the negative, when I cross the line, the two does not go underneath with me as well. So yeah, that's our kind of our main differential rules. Rewrite in the thirds, and then, like I said, multiply, take one away. Let's try another one. So rate of change. This is another nice way of saying the differential. If you're not really sure when you see a question like this, if you're not sure if it is differentiation, just do some differentiation. You, know, you might get a mark for it. Okay. But yeah, rate of change. Things like you know acceleration, the uh, radiant, um, slope, all these kind of you know the optimization. These are all kind of words that are associated with um, with differentiation. So our first one we've got uh, oops, I want to write like that. 
dt. I've got a function in terms of t. And then that's that. Okay. And at the side there, we've just got our, um, you know, the rules of the function. We can't t can't be equal to zero because I can't divide by zero. So we just ignore that. And we want to know the rate of change when t is five. So this function. What's the rate of change when t is five? Okay. Well, the first thing I have to do is rewrite my function. So I'm going to say that that is one half t to the negative one. So very easy, I think, there to say 2t to the negative one and bring the whole thing up. But like we said before, remember that this half is very separate from the t. Okay, This is the same as saying I've got 1 over 2 multiplied by 1 over t. Okay, So the t is very much separate, and that's why the t comes up, but the half stays the same. So I'm ready to differentiate now. And then I can say I differentiate. And I'm just going to put it aside. I'm going to remind myself. Better differentiate x cubed would become 3x squared. Okay, so times them, take one away, right? Times them, take one away. So times them, I get negative a half. And if I take one away, I get negative 2. Okay, I can't leave it like that. I can't really do that sum. So let's rewrite it nicely. So negative 1 over 2, because it's a half. And the t is going to become positive. When I change the sign, yeah, I cross the line. Absolutely. So that looks nice to me. That's my d over t. And my final mark will be for substituting in 5. So I'm going to say, okay, well, I want to know what the rate of change is when this function is 5. So negative 1 over 2, 5 squared. So 25 times 2 is 50. Negative is going to be negative 1 over 50. There's a few places to trip up there, I think. First of all, it's bringing that half up. That's easy done. And then again at the end here, It'd be quite easy to think, well, I don't know what to do. Um, so you need to rewrite this so we can do the sum. Right now we can't really, you know, I can't really do that in my head. I can do this one. And then forgetting to substitute at the end as well. So if you know, used all the information on the question, that, that's a good technique as well. You know, if you once you use the information, you know, I've used this, I've used this. We don't need to worry about that. Don't worry about that. Um, but yeah, once you've used it, score it off if you want. So for that definitely works for the bigger questions. And I think we can just about manage this. What well, two and a half minutes to go? So find dy by dx. So that's quite nice. It's just told you right differentiate. No ambiguity in this question. I'm just going to write that with x to the half. Okay. So again, when you see a third, you need to put it into this fractional index so you're able to differentiate it. And then dy by dx. Uh, Twelve times three, thirty-six. I hope. Plus an eight times a half. Now some people, this is quite a good technique. Some people would write a half times eight x and then do their fraction. So just to just to save your brain a bit of power, just say, well, I know I'm times that by a half. Now I can look at that and say it's going to be four, but you might not be just as confident, and that's fine. So you could write that if you want. And all you're doing now with your brain is saying, right, I need to take one away from this, so it would be negative a half. And then on the next line, you can say, right. What's that bit going to be? A half times eight, that's going to be four. Okay, fantastic. I've just differentiated that. Because if you were to get a function like, you know, 4x to the 3 over 2, you could then differentiate that and say, okay, well, that's 4, uh, sorry, that's 3 over 2 times 4x, and that become a half. And then you would do your 4 times 3 is 12 divided by 2, rather than do it in, you know, one big step. So you might decide you want to write it like that. And just to finish off, obviously, we have to then write, we'll write it with a positive power. So that's going to be 4 over root x. Take that below, it's going to be 1 over x to the half. And then x to the half becomes my root. Okay. Uh, two seconds. And yeah, I think this is one of the, the little mistakes. I think the first, this is the last term in the answer. So I think they've, they seem to have missed this. Um, unless you know something I don't, you know, let, <laughs> let me know. But um, yeah, that's our um, first video then with the kind of easy differential questions. So you're watching out for phrases like rate of change, dy by dx, obviously. And your big rules are turning your thirds into your fractions. When you change the sign, you cross the line. And remembering the overall concept, you know, something like x cubed is going to become 3x squared. So multiplying this and this, and then taking one away. So just the very last one before I get cut off. 3x to the 4 is going to become 12x to the 3. But maybe write something like that on the side of the page just to remind you. And yeah, next video coming up. Hope that was helpful.